patreon.com slash the walkoff podcast uh four dollars a month gets you in there we are so excited to have returning to the show pitcher for the toronto blue jays organization hag and danner haggy d welcome back to the walkoff buddy thanks so much for taking the time thanks for having me man it's always fun on here yeah, we're excited to catch up with you again. And to start with, congrats on getting healthy, man. I know that uh, last off se- or last season, I should say, was a bit of an ups and down one, but uh, good to see you back on the field and ready to roll. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's uh, lightly spoken of. You know, I <laughs> it was the whole year I was sitting in the rehab room, so yeah, that was not too fun. Was that the uh, longest, most substantial kind of rehab of your career so far? Oh yeah. The longest one before that was maybe three weeks to a month. Jeez, so, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> can, you, can you, can you give us a little bit of a, a peek behind the curtain, what it's like during a lengthy rehab? Like, were you in Florida at the, at the complex the whole time? Did you have a regimen and timetable right out of the gate or was it a lot of wait and see what, what, how did that play out? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I first went to, I got my second opinion in Dallas. So I went straight to Dallas Texas to go meet with uh, Meister and when he told me I wasn't getting surgery that was the best news I was like okay sweet no surgery and then he said he told me no throw for six weeks and I was like all right well usually whatever you don't throw for you double that for your throwing program so I started doing the math and I was like okay that probably adds up to like four months I was like I was like sweet that's gonna suck but then I get there and I mean, things are going smoothly at first. And then I got on the mound through a couple of bullpens and my arm flared up again and that I took more time off. And so I ended up being about like six and a half months, probably. Mentally, um, that had to have been a tough one, eh? When you got back on the mound and realized, shit, this is not done yet. Right. Yeah, no. It, I, and the sad thing was to me, is like, it felt so good. And then it was randomly like one bullpen where it flared up again. And I was like, no way, man, that's <laughs> definitely not what I wanted, but this was your shoulder, right? Elbow. Elbow. Okay. Elbow. Yeah. Yeah. Avoiding surgery though. In the end, this is good news, right? Yeah. 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 In the end, it's good news. I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but I'm just going to, it, the, the way I thought about it is that I'm just going to keep giving it my all every day. And I mean, I can't, I can only control the controllables. So what's the rehab like, like, are you with other guys? Were there other dudes there while you're going through it? Yeah. Yeah. It, we had a, we had quite a bunch. We had probably like 15 guys um, hanging out there. It's very repetitive. That's what I learned. I mean, you get in, you get go in at like 8 AM every day and you leave around 12 or one o'clock it's like the most repetitive days and you really don't have anything to do so it was and then you're in you're in midsummer in florida so you're just dying of heat <laughs> yeah, so you really yeah. just you really just sit inside there's a couple times where i felt myself maybe getting a little depressed there and, and staying in my apartment at all times and just had to find i had one of my buddies in town so he he uh, stayed with me for the whole the whole rehab which was awesome Buddy, it's so funny. We were uh, talking to Chris Beck on Monday and yeah. uh, you wound up coming up and I don't even know how it wound up coming up, but the weather in Florida came up and he was talking yeah. about you and he's like, oh yeah, you give Haggy D a second. He can't wait to throw in your face that California's weather is way better. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. All the time. <laughs> Did you, um like, you did get healthy in time to compete in the Arizona Fall League, which is you know, something, I guess if there's a, if there's a light at the end of the tunnel, at least it was that outside of your first game too, you were absolutely dominant. You didn't allow a run the entire time. Um, despite that though, did you feel rusty? Like what was their rust? Yeah. So, I mean, I tried, there was at the first, first outing or two, I did feel a little bit of rust more. So just like the jitters of like having the hitter in there and the, just making sure I don't overthrow because I was, you know, you, I want to blow up the hitter, you know, I want to throw it as hard yeah. as I can. Kind of. But uh, I mean, to me, I got my, my mind was ready because we did take a little extra time because once I realized I was going to be out for so long, I kind of put in my head like, Hey, if I don't go back to season, I think I'm going to do the Arizona fall league. Like I was thinking I would be a perfect candidate for it. So I was kind of in my head. I was just going to be an Arizona fall league guy. So got my mind right for that. When I got there, it was, First outing was a little, little rough, but I mean, after that I settled in. 
how are you used in Arizona? Was it all about just getting some innings in you or were they, were there leverage situations they were trying to get you into? How did that all play out? Yeah. So to start, it was kind of just giving me a clean inning because it was my first, my first uh, innings after rehab. But uh, after that, it was, I mean, I was on a schedule. I would throw and then I'd have two days off um, and then I'd throw again. And it was only one inning. I'd go maximum one inning. Um, but towards the end, it was, I was coming in seventh, eighth or ninth inning, which was awesome. I'm, I'm really curious at a scenario where you were in, where you missed that whole season. And then you come back in the Arizona fall league. Did you just shut down again after that? Like, I, cause I know you're in like a yearly routine, right? So right. were you, were you throwing in the off season? Uh, yeah. So I took about only a week off <laughs> and then I just, I mean, I started playing catch again and I mean, I feel great. So that was, I, I'm glad I didn't take too much time off. I really just, if I would have taken too much time off, I think I would have kind of set myself back a little bit, but yeah, I've kind of stayed on top of it. And I mean, I'm ready to go. I'll probably throw, start throwing live ABs next week. So that'll be exciting. What are your goals for spring training? I know you just mentioned that in the Arizona fall league, it was one clean inning. That's it. Moving forward, I'm guessing higher leverage situations is what you're after and maybe the yeah. ability to go four outs if you can, or, or, or what are your goals? Yeah. I mean, to be honest, man, my goals are whatever the blue chase want me to do. I don't <laughs> love that. I don't really have, yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't really have a specific thing. I, I want to, my goal is to try to, if not crack the, crack the, roster out of spring training it's uh to show them that I really I can do it I'm healthy you know it's not just to go in there and you know have fun it's I'm I'm going there (laughs) because I I I mean business this year you know I'm not going there just to show face so I love that I love that not just going there to have fun although let's be serious you are a seasoned vet within this this organization some people don't even know right like you were drafted in 2017 as a catcher yeah and I know we (laughs) we talked about this last time you were on the show about your transition into pitching but if you go up and down this organization dude you know almost everybody like literally almost everyone we bring on this show if your name comes up they've got some sort of story to tell about yeah. you are you are you excited about spring training it's got to feel almost like a class reunion at, like yeah and honestly every year i am so always like that week heading into spring training i'm like okay well i'm about, i'm going to miss home a little bit but then like a couple of days before i'm like you know what man spring training is the best time of the year i get to see everyone <laughs> i've been waiting to see all year and people i didn't play in the in the past year with in minor league so like I mean you get to see all those guys it's fun I see you guys have Jano on today so yeah that's awesome he's someone that that helped me a lot through the uh, catching he couldn't make he I couldn't make it out. as a pitcher though he had to stick to catching he had to stick to catching I think he's all right <laughs> at it. <laughs> yeah he gets by <laughs> I, think, I think he's just fine uh is it kind of I mean obviously you can't look too far ahead right but yeah. you've come a long way there's got to be a little bit of validation and just even hearing from the scouts and from the pundits that you look ready to make that next jump. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, there's nothing to say. I, I try not to look at like what other of people course. say, but um, <laughs> I mean, I, I personally, I do feel ready. I feel ready. Um, I have come a long way mentally, physically, um, and just trying to like, have have the game be a positive aspect in my life and that that's how it's it's starting to become and it's I mean I said try not to just go out there for fun but like me going out there competing that is so much fun so it's it's I mean I you'll see me smile in spring training probably a ton and it's, I mean it's the best time oh you're back out there on the field why wouldn't it's you best. right it's the best it's funny how stuff like that puts it in perspective, eh? Because when you're in the grind and you're just, your your head's down and you're focused, it's easy to forget about stuff like health matters. Right. You know, like, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, walk off community. I hope you enjoyed that little clip. This full episode is going to be available on our main channel sometime in the next few weeks. However, if you can't wait for that, you can get the full episode right now available on our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash the walk-off podcast.